Hello there. I'm back. I'm in your backyard. Let me in. Come on, you're not an intellectual. You're a fake and a fraud. Resident Evil 4 Remake is the 29th installment in the long-running Resident Evil franchise. As you can assume, it is a remake of the extremely popular 2005 video game Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is widely regarded as one of the greatest games of all time, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I think it's terrific. Nice. Yeah, it might be a little bit dated when it comes to the controls, but once you get used to them, RE4 has some of the best gameplay still to this day. I say this because there was a lot of hype for the remake. I mean, I was having heart palpitations leading up to the release of this thing. Okay, not really, but I was excited. I was also skeptical. I don't exactly know what my favorite game is, but RE4 is definitely up there. So I was a little anxious the remake may not live up to the original. But upon finally getting it months after it came out, I can comfortably say this game is oh that was so cool but you probably know all that already and you probably want to watch someone suffer through this game's platinum you sick maniac well boy howdy have i got good news for you because this shit is worse than traversing the nine circles of hell there are a grand total of 47 trophies in RE4, seven of those trophies being a part of the DLC campaign separate ways. There aren't many trophies that seem to be particularly easy in this game either. A lot of this game's trophies require some level of planning and skill in order to get them. Honestly, it felt like I was studying for the nap plan in preparation for this game. It was a joke six people will get. PSN profile says that it will probably take me about seven playthroughs to get the platinum. Technically, you can get it in only two playthroughs, but you'd have to be an absolute monster to do that. And a monster? I am not. 69, dudes! I'll start off with the simplest stuff first. There are a few trophies for defeating the bosses you'll come across while playing through the game. I don't want to imply these are easy to defeat, but as trophies go, there isn't anything crazy you have to do. Just shoot the bad guy. Only one of these trophies are actually missable for defeating the Verdugo boss. You will encounter it while playing the game and you can either fight it or avoid it, but if you run past it, you won't get the trophy or the treasure it drops. There are a lot of collectibles in this game. The main one you'll often encounter are treasures. You can find these all over the map throughout the game. Once you find these, you can sell them to the merchant for a good couple of clams. There are four trophies related to collecting all the treasures, three of them being to find every treasure in each of the game's maps. The first being the village, then the castle, and then finally the island. There's also another trophy for selling a piece of treasure worth 100,000 or more pesetas. To do this, you have to combine certain treasures with these small gems you can find. And depending on what gems you use and what colors they are, you'll get a bonus multiplier. Luckily, you can buy a treasure map from the merchant that reveals where all the treasures are. There are these small collectibles called Clockwork Castellans. One of them appears in every chapter. There's 16 in total, and unfortunately, there's no map for these, so you have to keep an eye out for each of them. Or just you, the guide. To unlock another one of the collectible trophies, you have to complete all the merchant requests. Throughout the game, you'll come across these blue pieces of paper. Each one activates a small side quest, and upon completion, you are given spinels or spinels. Spinel, spit, spinel. These are a type of premium currency, not like microtransactions, it's just like you can only get them from the requests, and also they have like a small chance of dropping randomly. There are certain items that can only be bought, like the treasure maps from before, but also a few guns which are needed for another trophy called Gun Fanatic. Once again, another collectible. This is obtained by collecting every weapon in the game, of which there's 29. This trophy is where a few of this game's many playthroughs come in. While most weapons can be bought or found by playing through the game, there are three weapons that need to be unlocked by completing certain challenges. There is a shooting range that appears a few times throughout this game, and also a couple trophies along with it. There are a few trophies related to difficulty, like finishing the game on Hardcore and Professional. You also have to finish the game with certain rankings like an A or an S plus in order to unlock certain items which are either needed for a trophy or significantly help with getting one. That's the general gist. There are a few other trophies that are only attainable at certain points, but I'll bring them up when I feel it's necessary. This intro is probably way too long, so with all that being said, let's get into it. So these punks, yes. I don't know if they wanted money mm -hmm. or they wanted something more sexual. But it's a lucky thing, I had my pieces. Your, your pieces? My gun. Oh, 
Right. Uh, anyway, I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. But I don't want so good either. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero, and I'll accept that responsibility. Well, my first playthrough, I just wanted to experience the game and have fun with it. I figured I'll probably start going for the Platinum after my first playthrough. Despite that, I still got about half the game's trophies. Starting in the village, it took me about an hour or so to get my first trophy, Knife Basics. I think I accidentally deleted the footage for this trophy because I could not find it. Uh, so here's a screenshot of the evidence. It was soon after Knife Basics when I got Nice One Stranger and my preferred piece. The first trophy was unlocked for turning in my first merchant request, while the second was for upgrading a gun for the first time. A little bit later I got Revolt against the Revolting for destroying my first out of 16 Clockwork Castellans. I had already missed a few of them by this point so I'd have to go back on a second playthrough to get the rest. Next up I got Amateur Shooter, this is really easy, you just get it for completing one of the shooting range games. You don't even need a good score or anything. Oh, I didn't do very well. I got an A, that's bullshit, I hate it. The first unmissable trophy I got was Harpoon Hurler. This is for defeating the first boss, Del Lago, uh, which is a giant mutant salamander. It's a pretty cool boss. I remember seeing gameplay of this back when I was a little kid, back in the early days of YouTube, you know, back when the subscribe button was yellow. I think it took me about three or four attempts, but overall it's pretty easy, not that hard. Oh, yeah! Suck my dick, Del bitch. After another hour or so, I finally found Ashley, who isn't nearly as annoying in this game compared to the original. Help! Leon! What's going on? Ah! I actually like Ashley in this game, but immediately after finding Ashley, I got the talk about a near-death experience trophy, which you get by saving her after she gets grabbed by an enemy. Very easy. I didn't even know this was a trophy until I got it. Oh! The next trophy I got was Grilled Big Cheese. You get this by beating Mendez. This fight is a little tougher than Del Lago, but overall it's not anything really worth mentioning. I actually think this fight is one of the few cases where the remake is easier than the original, because you can't dodge or parry in the original game. Also, that game has tank controls, so it's generally just harder to move around. Oh, grilled big cheese. Suck my nuts. Moving on to the castle, it was the first large combat encounter when I got the overkill trophy. This is just for killing an enemy using the cannon that appears in this section. Oh, that's not all of them. Where's this other one? Who's this prick? Oh, overkill. That's right, idiot. Oh, that was an zinger. A little bit later, I got the shield your eyes trophy. This is unlocked by defeating three enemies at once with a flash grenade. I'm just gonna use a flash grenade. I don't even care anymore, man. Hey, and I got a trophy for it. That's terrific. A while later, I got Wave Goodbye Right Hand. I mentioned this earlier, but it's the trophy that you get for defeating Verdugo. Uh, this trophy is missable if you run past and avoid Verdugo, which I'm sure a lot of people probably do, since this is not an easy fight by any means. Uh, definitely one of the harder bosses in the game, I'll, I'll say that. Yeah! Oh, wave goodbye, right hand. Is that like a... Oh, no, I thought it was a masturbation joke. Not too long after beating Verdugo, I got Astute Appraiser. I also mentioned this earlier. To get this, you have to sell a treasure worth 100,000 or more pesetas. As far as I'm aware, you can only do this by selling one of the two elegant crowns. Uh, what you want to do is inlay the crown with gems that are all different colors. This gives you a two times bonus, which bumps its value up to 100k. 100 grand! Goody gumdrops. The next trophy I got was Raider. This is for finding all of the treasures in the castle. This really isn't too hard. There's only a few treasures that require you to return to a previous area. Sometimes the place might have repopulated with enemies, but that's about the extent of how difficult it gets. Oh Getting this trophy also made me realize I had missed a treasure in the village because I didn't get the bandit trophy at any point. Yeah, that's awesome. Gonna have to find all those again. Ah, great. Fuck me. Immediately after getting Raider, I also had to fight Salazar. This is also a pretty tough fight, uh, much harder than the original. I'm pretty sure in the original, if you stand in a specific spot, Salazar can't hit you with any of his moves. There are two trophies related to this fight. The first one I got was You Talk Too Much. Uh, for throwing a grenade in Salazar's mouth. This took a couple of attempts overall, but you know, it was fine, it wasn't really that hard. Then the second trophy, No Thanks Bro, is unlocked by defeating Salazar. Pretty simple. Uh, that can. Uh, Oh god. 
That concludes the castle portion of the game and next up is the island. The first trophy I got while on the island was a masterpiece. This is obtained by purchasing a weapons exclusive upgrade. These are essentially just bonuses you can unlock for a gun after buying all the other upgrades. Alternatively, you can also use an upgrade ticket, uh, which can be bought using spinels, right? Spinels. Either way, you still get the trophy. Then after that, I deleted all my footage. Yep, yep, you heard that. Uh, I deleted about four to five hours worth of footage. On accident, obviously, but uh, yeah, I deleted the entire island part of the game. I was just absentmindedly transferring footage when I pressed the wrong button and I deleted everything. Uh, yeah, I was a little bummed out, uh, which is putting it lightly. Well, despite all that, the show must go on, so I'll, I'll go over all the trophies that I got. The first trophy I got after deleting everything, like a stupid asshole, uh, was two bugs, one stone. This is for shooting two parasites inside a regenerator with a single bullet. This trophy can be pretty difficult if you go for it normally, but I ain't got time for that. I'm on the clock. I, I gotta get this video out. So the easy way to get this trophy is by shooting a regenerator while it's asleep. Oh my god, that was a really sadistic thing to say. What I mean by it being asleep is there's this part where a bunch of regenerators are in these tanks and since they aren't moving, you can easily line up the shot and get the trophy. The next two trophies I got were both related to the shooting range. The first I got was Trick Shot for destroying five or more targets with a single shot. This isn't hard at all. The next one was a little harder, that being Real Deadeye. I mean, this still wasn't that bad. Uh, to get it, you have to get an S rank on all the games at the shooting range. Some of these can be pretty annoying, but it's really just about remembering which targets are going to pop up, and it's really just a lot of repetition. After those two, I got You Used To Be A Good Guy. This is unlocked by defeating Krauser, the second to last boss in the game. I'll go more in depth on his fight later since I beat him really easily during my first playthrough. I just riddled him with shotgun rounds and it was, it was done. It was not hard. Burglar was the next trophy I got. This is for getting all the treasures on the island. This is by far the easiest out of the three since there's only like 20 treasures on the entire island. Next trophy I got was Your Small Time. This is for beating Saddler, the final boss. Once again, I'll talk more about this later. But I will say, Saddler is way harder in this game. I got one last trophy during the final stretch, that trophy being Smooth Escape. This is unlocked by not taking any damage during the jet ski escape at the end of the game. Then at the very end for finishing the game, I got Promising Agent for finishing the game on Normal and Proficient Agent for completing the game on Hardcore. Pretty good for a first playthrough, I think, you know, not to toot my own horn, but I definitely consider myself the greatest cosmic being to ever exist. And if you disagree with that sentiment, I'll crush your head between my hands. Oh shit, here we go again. For playthrough number two, I wanted to get some of the challenge run stuff out of the way. So for this run, I was going for Sprinter, which is to beat the game in under eight hours. Minimalist, which you get by completing the game using only handguns and knives. You can still shoot red barrels, but you can't use grenades or anything that isn't a knife or a pistol. There was Silent Stranger. This is for beating the game without speaking to the merchant once. The final trophy I decided to go for this run was Frugalist. This is unlocked by finishing the game without using a single item. PSM profile says that you should get this trophy later on in a future run, but I figured, eh, how hard could it be? What do they know? They're just a bunch of Melvins. Pencil pushes. I'm a dog. I'm biting the fart bubbles in the bath. I'm on 12 Vicodins smoking on Scooby-Doo dick. Don't call that pussy the Matrix, because I'm in this bitch and I can't get don't do frugalists this early. It was poor judgment on my part. I made a bad decision. If you do this yourself, do it later. I also played on assisted this time since there's a small amount of health regeneration, which I figured would be useful since I can't use any healing items. There really wasn't a whole lot to say about this run in the beginning. I did this run in New Game Plus, which meant I still had all my stuff from the previous playthrough. The handgun I had decided to use was the Red 9. It has the highest damage out of all the handguns. And since I was playing on assisted, I was just dropping kids left and right. During the first few chapters, I got Revolution Wind Up for destroying all the it? Clockwork Castellans. Where is it? There he is, the last one, you bitch. Oh, there we go. Doing this also unlocked the Primal Knife, which is one of the weapons I needed for Gun Fanatic. It wasn't until the holdout with Luis in the house when this run really began getting spicy. 
Throughout the first couple of chapters, I had taken a few hits here and there, which slowly but surely whittled my health down. And during the holdout in the house, I got hit quite a lot. Uh, at the time, I didn't think this was an issue, but it wasn't until later I realized how much of a bad idea it was to go for Frugalist this early on. Since I was trying to get this trophy along with Minimalist and Silent Stranger, it meant I was at a huge disadvantage not being able to use other weapons and also not being able to buy body armor and repair my knives. Even though Assisted has health regen, it only regenerates to the point where I can only take two hits for dying, and it only regenerates outside of combat. So if I'm in a combat encounter, I can only get hit two times before I die. I spent most of this playthrough on the verge of death. Not feeling so well. While in the castle, I got Never Heard It Coming, which is for killing a Garador using only knives. Not very hard. They're blind, so all you have to do is just crouch and then sneak up behind them and then just hope they don't go like ballistic and cut your head off. There were a few pretty tough areas in the castle. The first one was the castle battlements. For this whole section, there's a giant throwing rocks at you. Uh, there's also these plaga enemies called Arana. They're these little spider guys that jump on enemies and make them go berserk. They're just very annoying and I don't like them. Oh my god, it exploded! Another area that sucks major asshole is the double Garador room. This room, believe it or not, has two Garadors in it. The Garadors are blind, so they can only hear you. This isn't an issue with the first Garador encounter, since there's only one of them. But now there's two of them, so when you damage one of them, the other will hear it and come fart in your mouth. This room also has infinitely spawning enemies, and fighting them creates a lot of noise. So it's really just this annoying back and forth, trying to damage the Garadors, but also trying to kill and avoid the normal mobs. This part just kind of stinks. Oh, got it. After the double Garador encounter, we find ourselves traversing some caves beneath the castle. Oh, oh. And for some reason, I fought Verdugo. I don't know why. I already had the trophy for beating it. I, I don't know. I just like getting my balls stomped on, I guess. Down here is where I got another two trophies. The first one I got was I Hope You Like Thrill Rides. This is for getting through both minecart chases without taking any damage. This isn't too hard to begin with, but since I was playing on assisted, enemies have Stormtrooper aim. So whenever they would shoot, I they'd just completely miss their shit, honestly. And the second trophy I got in the caverns was Jack of All Trades. This is for completing all of the merchant requests. I should have gotten this in my first playthrough, but I unfortunately had a sudden bout of brain rot and forgot to destroy one of these hives. Fortunately, you don't have to do every single merchant request in one playthrough, that's exclusive to the treasures. I did have to turn in the request to the merchant to get the trophy. In order to not void the trophy, I made a save for talking to him and then just reloaded it after I got the trophy. I knew I could count on you. Soon after this, I did the Krause and Knife fight. This one wasn't too bad. It did take a few attempts, uh, but it was nothing compared to the absolute throttling, the bullying. I would later receive from him. What? Don't, don't do that. Quit it. Don't. After eventually making it back to the castle, I tried to get another trophy called Capacity Compliance. You get this by not letting a single enemy jump onto the elevator as it rises. I gave this a good few attempts, but ultimately I figured, eh, who gives a shit, and I moved on. I did Salazar's boss fight next, and. Between you and me, and I mean it, I don't want anyone to find out about this. If anyone catches wind of this, well, no one will find out about this, right? This fight was tricky. As I mentioned previously, Salazar has a lot of annoying moves that do a lot of damage, and since I can only take two hits this entire fight, I was in for a bad time, is what I thought. In reality, I absolutely throttled Salazar. If you hide behind and underneath this pillar on the left side of the arena, it makes it a lot easier to dodge Salazar's attacks. You still need to move around, but it gives you good cover. Alternatively, if you have a golden egg or two, you can throw them at Salazar and kill him instantly. But I didn't know that until way later, so I had to do it the old old fashioned way, baby. Gross, don't ever say that again. Now I was up to the island, this part of the game proved to be quite a challenge. The fuck did you see that shit? I'm John Wick, bitch! The normal enemies have practically leveled up. Some of them have armor and impenetrable. Oh, fuck me, here we go. Some of them have armor, impenetrable. 
Oh, some of them have armor, impenetrable. Oh, some of them have armor, impenetrable shields. Yes. RPGs? I fucked their delivery. Some of them have armor, impenetrable shields, and RPGs. I got it that time. There are also these large guys with these automatic crossbows. Uh, they replace an old enemy that used to have a minigun in the original game. Uh, fun fact, you can actually parry their shots if you time it right, uh, which I can't. One of the hardest things about the island are the regenerators. Oh, fuck me. And considering the fact I could only take two hits, well, god damn it, Bobby, these guys really blasted my ass. I really only have like one or two insults, and they're all related to cocks and balls and ass. I need to expand my repertoire of insults. The only way to kill a regenerator is by destroying all the parasites inside of it, and the only way to see said parasites is by using an item called the Biosensor Scope, which can only be equipped on a rifle. Thing is, I was doing a minimalist run, so I couldn't actually use the rifle to kill the regenerators. I could only use it to see what the parasites were. Also, handguns don't have much penetration, so trying to kill these things was just a massive waste of ammo and a pain in my ass. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, these guys are a bit of a cocky dynia, as well as corpulent. Hmm, how do you like that for an expanded vocabulary? They make me so mad, I wish I could bescumber them. There was another part later on that was a bit of an annoyance. It's this part where you have to defend Ashley as she uses a wrecking ball to destroy a concrete wall. The thing is, I'm pretty sure the wrecking ball is made out of uh, dog shit, because it takes like 15 good wallops to destroy the entire thing. The whole time you're out there like John Wick banging heads, and then she has the audacity to say, I did good. As it turns out, you can blow the wall up and skip this entire section if you have a rocket launcher. Uh, once again, I didn't know about this, but even if I did, I couldn't skip this anyway, because if you do that, you, you know, you don't get the trophy. Right, yeah, of course. Almost immediately after that, you fight Krauser for a second time. It's probably the easiest boss fight in the whole game. Definitely easier than the original. For the first half of the fight, Krauser hunts you as you traverse through these old ruins, avoiding a bunch of traps along the way. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, whoa, I think I just experienced a heart attack. It's really easy, the traps never change or anything, and Krauser attacks at the same point every time. So once you know what'll happen, it's just Minority Report. Except for this one part where Krauser grabs you, and since I didn't have enough health to escape the grab, he would just instantly kill me. I knew you would- what?! I didn't even get a, the chance to fight back. Oh, piss off. I thought I might have been soft locked here, but eventually I figured a way out. Fuck you, Krauser. Fuck you, 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 fuck you. I'm in a pit trap. Oh, okay, I guess so. Fucking piece of shit. What a prick. Okay, I didn't die. How did an explosive bow and arrow not kill me? That guy sucks. The unfortunate thing about my escape, however, is I got caught in a bear trap, which allowed Krauser to damage me. At first, I didn't think this was an issue, but as time went on, I realized my health wasn't regenerating, which meant the game recognizes this whole section as a combat encounter. On top of that, I had hit a checkpoint, so whenever I restarted the checkpoint, my health was still in one-shot territory. This meant that for the rest of the boss fight, I could only get hit once. Are you kidding me, dude? I shot him like three times and he was like, no, 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 that's no problem at all, no. What transpired over the next 30 minutes was a trouncing for the ages. The issue I had with Krauser is that I was unfamiliar with his moves. Most of my deaths were because I hadn't seen that move before. But eventually I figured out a good way to do damage while also keeping my distance from him. The arena this takes place on has two levels. There's the main level that you start on, and then there's the second level that you need to climb up a ladder to reach. What I realized you can do is climb up the ladder, run away a little bit so you have some distance between you and Krauser. Then I would shoot at his little toes and just slowly whittle his health down. And after a few attempts of that, I finally killed Krauser. Oh! 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 Yeah, there we go. That's real good. Shut up, dude. I don't want to hear it. There's another large combat encounter after Krauser, but honestly, it wasn't that bad. Hmm. 
There's not really a whole lot to mention here. There's a guy in a helicopter that helps you out. His name is Chopper Mike. Uh, probably doesn't say that on his birth certificate, but you never know. Anyway, he dies. Rip, RIP, uh, pull one out. Then after another combat encounter and finally getting rid of the Plaga and Leon and Ashley, it is time to fight Sadler. Like Salazar, Sadler has a bunch of puking attacks. So these also do a lot of damage. Why there's so much puke in this game? It's weird. Another thing that's tough with Sadler is you have to shoot him in these small eyes that are on his legs. And once you destroy enough of the eyes, Sadler will be stunned, which will allow you to stab him in the eye. The mouth one he's got, <laughs> Betty's got a lot of insight. Betty can see those amygdalas as soon as he gets out of the church. This fight was really beating my ass, especially after the first phase when he calls them the Novistadors. So I tried something a little silly, a little bit goofy, a little bit rambunctious some might say. I beat Sadler using only a handgun, but I also used healing items. After that, I escaped on the jet ski with Ashley, and at the results screen I got Sprinter, Silent Stranger, and that was it. I didn't get Minimalist, the, the one that for the whole game I was using a handgun and I didn't get the trophy for it. Uh, this is because at the very beginning of the game, I used the submachine gun to destroy some blue medallion. I didn't even realize I did this. So for this whole run, I had unnecessarily handicapped myself. I was pretty bummed out about that, but I still had to get Frugalist. So I reloaded the save right before fighting Sadler, and now that I could talk to the merchant, I sold all my treasures and bought the infinite rocket launcher for 2 million bones. Whew! I started the boss fight once again, and I immediately killed Sadler. Oh, oh my god! I did not expect him to die that easy. Uh, I escaped on the jet ski with Ashley once again, and during the results screen, Frugalist oh, pop. Oh, oh, thank fuck I got it. Just, just stand back. Where's the trigger? It's that one right there. But aim first, man. Okay. My third playthrough was honestly uh, pretty uneventful. Uh, this time I was going for the Peerless Agent Trophy, which you get by beating the game on the hardest difficulty, oh Professional. This would have been a tough challenge if I didn't have the infinite rocket launcher, but, you know, I did. I really didn't expect how powerful this thing was. I figured it would kill normal enemies in a single shot, as it should, but I didn't expect all the bosses to die in a single shot as well. Mendez, banged him. Verdugo, banged him. Salazar, banged him. Krauser, you'll never guess what I did, but I banged him. And of course, the big fella himself, Sadler. Uh, so yeah, uh, there really wasn't a whole lot to say about this run. I did finish this playthrough in under, I think it's 8 hours. Uh, by doing so, I unlocked two items. The Chicago Sweeper, which is needed for Gun Fanatic, and also a suit of Knight's Armor for Ashley. The armor makes Ashley completely invincible, which means that she can't be grabbed and taken by enemies. Uh, you also can't accidentally kill her, which I, I did a lot during my third playthrough. Like most of my failures were because I accidentally blew Ashley up. I did also get the Capacity Compliance Trophy on this run. Uh, it was... It was incredibly easy with the infinite rocket launcher. Unfortunately, that was the only time I was able to use the infinite rocket launcher because for my fourth playthrough, I once again went for minimalist. This playthrough was omega boring. It was also way easier than my second. I mean, I'd already done this before. Oh. This was the playthrough when I got Bandit as well, uh, since I didn't have a time constraint like my previous two runs. After getting Minimalist, I only had to do one more run of the game, but I was getting pretty tired of playing through the story so many times, so I decided to take a break and instead play the Mercenaries mode. They were all dead. The final gunshot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger, and then it was over. My main goal while playing Mercenaries was to get an S rank on each of the three maps using any character. By accomplishing this task, I would unlock the hand cannon. I've never been a huge fan of the mercenaries in mode in Resident Evil, so going into this I was thinking I probably wouldn't enjoy it and that it'll be kinda hard to get an S rank. God damn is that actually that prick. I ah oh, mate. So going into this, I was thinking I probably wouldn't enjoy it and that it would be kind of hard to get an S rank on all the maps. As it turns out, I'm a stupid little bitch. This game's mercenaries mode is great. 
I think Capcom tweaked the damage and the stun chance in this mode to make it way easier to kill enemies. And also you're constantly getting supplies by killing enemies so you never really run out of resources. It's just this like constant cycle of just like killing stuff and just picking stuff up and getting points and seeing the numbers go up and it's just like you know it's fun. It's good. I like it. Thumbs up. Maybe even two. Anyway, my first run in Mercenaries mode, I played as Leon. He's a very good, well-rounded character. He has a pistol, shotgun, and rifle, uh, which are all very useful. And his mayhem ability, which is essentially his ultimate ability for all the Overwatch fans out there, all zero of you, makes Leon do more damage and move faster, which is pretty solid, especially against the mini bosses. It also wasn't very hard. After about 15 minutes, I defeated all 150 enemies and got the S rank on my first attempt. Next up I moved on to the castle and this time I played as Luis, who from what I've heard is the worst character to play as, but I still think he's pretty decent. He only has two weapons, the Red Nine which is a really powerful handgun but has pretty dog shit accuracy. Then his second weapon is a bolt action rifle. This gun does a lot of damage as well but its main drawback is the need to cock the rifle after every shot. Luis has the ability to drop a bundle of dynamite at his feet. This is very powerful when used correctly and it also charges up really fast. You can either shoot it or wait for it to blow up, but either way, it will kill everything near it, including mini bosses. The final map was the island, this time I was playing as Krauser. Krauser is probably the most unique out of all the playable characters. He once again only has two main weapons, the TMP, but also a bow with explosive arrows. Krauser's mayhem ability is kind of like a rage mode. He transforms into his boss mode for a couple of seconds and he run around slicing dudes in half like a prototype. Unfortunately, I did die as Krauser with only a few enemies left as well, so that sucks, but as it turns out, you need 500,000 points to get an S rank, and I had managed to get that despite dying. Which meant I had now unlocked the hand cannon, the last weapon needed for Gun Fanatic. You know what I'm saying? Oh! I got the hand cannon! I thought you needed to do all four characters, not three. Oh, let's go! Okay. Storage. Give me that, give me that, give me that. Hey, gun fanatic. There we go. I'm not doing it the hard way, fuck off. With that, I just had to complete the game one last time. My final two trophies were Mission Accomplished S Plus and S Plus Rank Investigator. These are to beat the game with an S Plus, who could have guessed? Uh, to get said rank, you have to beat the game in under five and a half hours. The former is unlocked by getting an S plus on standard, while the latter is for getting an S plus on hardcore. This run I decided to play on hardcore and assumed that these would stack. As well as needing to beat the game in under 5 hours and 30 minutes, I also had to do this run in a new game, meaning I couldn't use any of my upgraded weapons from previous runs and my health was at its default starting point. Although I could still use the 3 weapons I had unlocked in my previous runs, the thing is they had to be upgraded again, so this wasn't an immediate cakewalk. My game plan was to get enough spinels throughout the village so that upon arriving to the castle I could buy an exclusive upgrade ticket from the merchant. I would then use this ticket to purchase the infinite ammo upgrade for the Chicago Sweeper which would then make the run much easier. However, I still had to get there. The first few chapters went by without much trouble. I did kick a guy's axe out of the air one time which was pretty sweet. I kicked his axe out of the air as he threw it at me. That was awesome. It was the coolest thing I've done in this game. Del Lago was an absolute pushover. It's like beating up a child, it's very easy. Much like my second playthrough, the first real obstacle this run was the holdout with Luis. I got really close to beating this section a few times, but each time I almost reached the end, I would get killed by this big bull fella. After a few attempts, I did manage to complete this section, but it just seemed like luck, honestly. I don't really know what I did differently, but whatever, I'll take it. After a stressful encounter with two chainsaw-wielding sisters, I fought Mendez for the fifth time now and I didn't know if it's because I was feeling really burnt out at this point or if I'm just straight up bad probably both mainly the second one but this time Mendez just brutally assaulted me this dude was getting 21 years in the slammer for what he did to me it did get to the point where I died so many times I could read Mendez's moveset pretty easily so I did eventually beat him Finally, I made it to the castle, and the first thing I did here was use the spinels I had gotten throughout the village to buy the exclusive upgrade for the Chicago Sweeper. Now I had infinite ammo for the rest of the game. 
you never need to reload with the sweeper so every combat encounter just became bullets flying everywhere. It also trivialized most of the bosses too. Uh, I was firing so many bullets that I actually stun locked Verdugo. Even the two gigantes were pushovers. This time around I wanted to use the golden egg trick on Salazar to try and save some time so I made a quick detour to pick up the egg which did add a few minutes to the timer but ultimately I figured it would be worth it. Well goddamn call me Tom Cruise because I'm reporting a minority. I'm really really honored to be here. Because Salazar went down like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> A few moments later. Oh, and I've killed Salazar. Wow. Wow, that egg tr trick. Man, that is so worth it. I'm doing that every time I play this game. I'm getting that egg every single time. That is incredible. After the fight with Salazar, I had some downtime to reflect. This run was going on four hours now, which got me a little nervous. Considering this was my fifth playthrough, I was pretty familiar with the game and I could estimate that the island would take about another hour or so to complete, which is cutting it a lot closer than I would have liked. So from now on, I would utilize my rat genetics to try and finish this game as quickly and unfairly as possible. I would funnel enemies into small rooms where they couldn't possibly harm me. I would kneecap enemies so they couldn't even get to me. I did everything in my power to finish the island as fast as possible. But even after all that, I still felt like I wasn't going fast enough. I was at 4 hours and 30 minutes, 1 hour left, and I still had 2.5 more chapters left. I fought Krauser, he went down quick and easy, he's really not that hard. Later I was able to skip a large portion of a combat encounter by destroying an AA gun with two heavy grenades rather than using the mounted gun you would typically use. Hey, nice! After that, I fought some more normal enemies and a few Novistadors. This took a little bit longer than I would have liked, but after getting through that, I was close to the end, but I only had about 30 minutes left. After saving Ashley, you're forced to endure this really slow, boring segment where you have to carry her as Leon slowly succumbs to the Plaga. This whole part was nail biting for me. There's nothing like being forced to go through such a long slog while on a timer. But after removing the Plaga, the bitch is crazy. I made my way to the final merchant of the game. Using the money I had accrued throughout my playthrough, I bought the rocket launcher for 160,000 shekels. I wasn't going to waste any time on this bold prick, alright? It's a piece of piece, as we like to say, down under. I thought I missed. And I won! With that, all I had to do was escape on the jet ski with Ashley and hope I completed the game in time. Come on, 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 Oh, yeah, I shit my pants. What? Where's the platinum? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Now I'm gonna use my detective brain here and make an assumption. Fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? To get the trophy for completing the game on standard with an S plus, you have to finish the game in under five hours. I missed this by one minute. One minute and 43 seconds to be exact. I did my 6th playthrough on standard this time, which, yeah. I was pretty checked out at this point. I, I thought I would get the Platinum last run, but I was a minute off. Uh, there really wasn't a whole lot to say about this run. I did the exact same thing as before, but it was even easier this time since, well, firstly, I was on standard, so the enemies just suck at their jobs. And I also unlocked the chicken hat in my last run. While it's equipped, Leon takes less damage. I also realized that I didn't actually have to fight every single enemy. I could just run past them. I also realized I didn't have to fight every single enemy. I could just run past most of them. Even though I had less time to complete this run, I had pretty much a full entire extra hour left. But finally, after four hours, I finished Resident Evil 4 for the last time and got the platinum trophy because I'm bored. Bloody bored of this game. Fuck me. <coughs> you know, I'm kind of dead inside. That I, I was I was so excited the last time and and this time it just doesn't it just doesn't feel as good. I thought I was gonna get it last time and then I didn't. And now I I'm, I'm just empty. I feel nothing anymore. I'm a husk.
I really enjoyed this game, even though it got pretty, you know, eh, 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 towards the end there. After my first playthrough, I was unsure whether I liked this game more than the original. It might be recency bias, but I, I think I'm leaning towards the remake. I don't really know. I'll, ha I'll have to play, you know, both games back to back sometime in the future. I actually really enjoyed the Mercenaries mode as well. Uh, so much so that I went back and I got an S plus uh, with every character to unlock Leon's RPD skin, uh, which is pretty cool. I did plan on getting all the trophies for separate ways, which is why I mentioned it way earlier in the video, but uh, I was really burnt out in this game, so I didn't end up doing it. I did play through the DLC though, like, you know, it's pretty good. I quite enjoyed it. It was only 15 bucks as well, so I mean, you know, it's like three, four hours, I think it took me to finish my first playthrough. And I was like halfway through a second one when I was like, I don't want to do this. So to me, it's well worth the money, you know, check it out if you want. Plus you get to play as Ada and she's cool. Overall, I, you know, if you want to get the Platinum, I mean, it's up to you, obviously, but uh, I, 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 I didn't mind it. I thought it was all right. It did get, you know, like I said, boring towards the end, but I, I wasn't like, God, this is the worst thing I've ever done. This is really hard. I was just kind of like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I got to unlock some stuff. You know, I, I probably wouldn't have unlocked the Chicago Sweeper if I didn't have to get, if I wasn't trying to get the Platinum, I probably just would have been like, ah, whatever, I'm never going to get that. But because the Platinum is like, oh, do a bunch of bonus stuff, you know, you get a bunch of cool stuff for it, which is nice, because a lot of games are like, do this really shit thing, and then you get nothing for it. And it's like, wow, I fucking hate this. I'm looking at you, Mafia 2, and your 300,000 wanted posters. That was the worst Platinum I've ever gotten. Probably. I think so, at least. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, wowie zowie, uh, zooey mama as well. Fuck, cut that. Don't put that in. I have an actual audience now, which is kind of crazy. That Metal Gear video got pretty big. Well, big for me, at least, you know, I mean, I, I think at the time of recording, it's had about 60,000 views and it's sort of like staying there. It's like slowly going up. But I mean, I'm OK with that. It's pretty good considering I was getting like 20 views before and they were mostly from me rewatching it because I'm like, this is funny. But those old videos, they're, so, they're old videos. They're like three months old. No, everything before that Metal Gear video is kind of sucks. And I don't really like it anymore. But, you know, that Metal Gear video, video I still think is pretty fun. Um, but yeah, thank you to everyone who left such nice comments. Uh, they were an absolute joy to read while I was violently blasting diarrhea out of my puckered red ring. And sorry for taking so long to get this video out. I thought it would be done before Christmas, but uh, that didn't exactly plan out. But I mean, I, I did play a few things, you know, while I was doing this, because this took like a month to platinum this game. I mean, I, I played Spider-Man 2. I got the platinum for that. That took like a week. That was pretty good. Like a 7 or an 8. Definitely not game of the year. Calm down, gamers. But I also played the God of War Valhalla DLC, which was pretty neat. Big fan of the old God of War games. Played them a lot as a kid. Also, the Batons in the skin for Arkham Knight came out, so I played a bit of Arkham Knight. Kind of a, kind of disappointing that skin, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, it's the last thing we'll get before that Suicide Squad game comes out, and oh boy, I am not excited. I'm a huge Batman fan, and I love Kevin Conroy's Batman, so. But yeah, I'll pro I don't know. I'm, I think I'll probably have to get the Platinum for that considering how much of an Arkham fan I am and Batman fan. But hopefully that game isn't awful. It just looks terrible. But I mean, it's got a battle pass and it's a fully priced game. So it's probably not going to be great. Anyway, thank you to those of you who stuck around through my old man rambling. Uh, kind of went on a bit too long. Uh, I think I might put up a poll for the next game. I'll Platinum because I have like, you know, an actual audience that people might be like, yeah, well, you'll check it out. So I guess be on the lookout for that if you're interested. Uh, I'll try to make them like, I think it'll be about three games, we'll see. But hopefully the next few games I make videos on won't take as long to make. Like I've looked at the trophy list and like how long it's supposed to take. And this game was like 50 hours and those are like not as long. So we'll see. I definitely have a lot of stuff I plan on making. So, you know, hit that. No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, you know, just stick around anyway uh thank you for watching i hope you stick around for my future stuff later alligator and that's about it that's all i got all right that's it no, i'm done